Let's now show the method of placement on an actual patient. On this particular appliance, we had placed on either side some headgear tubes. We have placed a 7 millimeter expansion screw. We will now try in the appliance to be assured of the fit. If the appliance is too tight, you may relieve acrylic where necessary. Any voids will be filled with adhesive. In this case, we were late in development since the patient had lost the upper right D during the lab work time. Our anchorage on the right side will be reduced. After obtaining the desired fit, we will place plastic primer to all surfaces to be bonded in the expander. Use the plastic bracket primer that is in the Excel adhesive kit. A failure to use the plastic bracket primer will result in all the adhesive being left on the teeth at the, at the debonding of the appliance. Next, you should pumice the buccal and lingual surfaces of all the teeth to be bonded. I personally pumice and etch the occlusal surfaces also to avoid debonding during expansion. The appliance may be more difficult to remove than if the buccal and lingual surfaces only were bonded, but more frequent debonding will occur in these cases. Be careful on adults that they do not have a severe undercut on the lingual surfaces. Having such an undercut would prevent the removal of the appliance at the end of the expansion. After pumicing, you should wash, dry, and place the etch to the surfaces desired for the bonding. Use two assistants, one to mix and one to take care of the patient's needs. On small patients, the isolation may be difficult. Here I am etching all surfaces of the teeth to be bonded. If adhesive is left in the, in the grooves on the occlusal surfaces, it is easy to take a high-speed handpiece and remove the excess adhesive. The edge time can be anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds up to the manufacturer's recommended 60 seconds. Recent studies have shown no difference between a 10 to 15 second etch and a 60 second etch on the enamel surface. At this particular moment, you should have one assistant mixing the bonding agent. After changing cotton rolls, you should dry all surfaces and the bonding agent should be ready to be placed. An efficient bonding procedure will enable you to maintain the isolated field. At this particular time, 
you should have the other assistant mixing the adhesive paste and filling each of the like appliance pads with adhesive. Now merely firmly seat the appliance and use some cotton rolls with the patient biting to obtain like a firm seat. Be sure to wax in the headgear tubes to avoid the filling of them with the adhesive. Now remove the excess on the buckle surface before the initial set with a curette. Remember there is an approximate three minute setting time. Watch the set on the pad and when that set becomes chalky, be sure to check in the tuberosity area. Leaving large hunks of adhesive in the tuberosity area will cause large ulcers and may at this point be removed with a curette. After a full set, you will need to like remove that adhesive with a high speed handpiece. Many times this is very difficult on small patients. Now you should check for any flash on the paddle aspect of the appliance. And of course check the occlusion. Next prepare the expansion key to avoid inadvertent swallowing of the key during expansion. I will first close the loop. And then use floss that is tied so it can be wrapped around the wrist. I will also shorten the length of the key because this makes it easier for the patient or parent to, to remove the key after the turn when the key is in the far back areas of the throat. A common problem in turning the key is to turn the key back slightly when removing it. In that case the patient will not be able to find the next hole to begin the next turn. Use a the hard wire cutter to shorten the key. Let's now give instructions to the patient's parent. 